Hey friends, Jacob here. I've got a couple messages uh, since my RPG items video, which you can find in the top right of this video, that asked if I could show how you can use these items in your game. So that's what this tutorial is about. This will be a little bit of a shorter tutorial, hopefully, because I have just finished a spreadsheet editor in Godot engine uh, that is actually running in this project. I'm working on a tutorial series that goes over how I uh, did that so that you can tweak it uh, if you decide to uh, download it, add it to your projects, which you are all welcome to do. So that'll be coming later this week or next week. But for now, we're going to go over some more of the functionality of these items that I helped set up in a previous video. So as you'll see here, this is the item class with some additions that I uh, set up in the RPG items video. Now I added this signal for when the item is depleted, and then I'm passing an item resource. So when you pass uh, variables via a signal, you have to put in some kind of dummy variable name here. It can be really anything. Uh, you can, uh, I, don't, I don't actually know if you can have, if you can uh, declare type. Nope, cannot. Uh, so just something to say, hey, I'm going to have one, uh, one argument being passed. So. I have this uh, function for adding the quantity, which we did last time, and then I added a function this time for decrementing the quantity. So minus one, right? So have quantity minus one, easy enough. And then if quantity is equal to zero, then you emit a signal. And if you're not familiar with signals, I can cover that as well uh, in a later video potentially. But for now, we're going to emit this signal up here to whatever nodes uh, or scenes have connected to the signal or who are listening for it and we're going to pass self which means this item that whatever item is this item class we're going to um emit that uh we have get texture and get quantity these are from last time and then i have a function called use item so this is the big the big function of this in question right so presumably you'll have a gui or maybe your player node will be the one that's accepting your player input right so if you hit for instance spacebar or what have you then this function use item will be uh, called via the gui because it'll know what items are in your inventory or in your hud or whatever whatever so all we're going to do is pass the target of the item so in most cases this will be the uh, the player, but perhaps you want to maybe uh, use an item on an enemy, then maybe you'd pass that in that enemy in. Or if you've abstracted all of your code, like I typically like to, then enemies and characters will have a lot of the same code behind them so that you could modify their stats via items uh, just like you do characters. So. Uh, then in this use item function, I call decrement quantity so that if the quantity decreases, yes. Now, some of you may be saying, well, this is very simple. It doesn't do anything though. Like, what do I do with stats? What, what does any of this mean? Well, that comes in the inherited classes, like the food item class and the armor class. So we're going to go to the food item class. And as we see, it extends item. So all of this code is in the food item class. And we have a variable that we set up last time for health restored. Now, this line is very important. This is something that a lot of people don't know about Godot, but you can call functions, parent functions, uh, explicitly. So for instance, uh, we are overriding use item, and we have to have at least the same amount of uh, parameters. So that's why we have target here. Now, to call a parent function, you do just dot use item whatever it might be you could even do dot um decrement quantity if you'd like to although you don't need to in this case because uh because there is no decrement quantity in this function but if for instance in the food item you wanted to say dec decrement quantity and then you want to say quantity minus equals two if you want to take two down every time you use an item then you could have uh have decrement quantity here and then if you wanted to use this decrement quantity first off i wouldn't do this function but then it'd be decrement quantity rather than adding a period before a period before will just decrease by one 
but without the period, it calls this decrement quantity, which uh, minuses by two. So there you go. Subtracts by two minuses. What am I talking about? So this is a way to call the parent function. So if you have any functionality in here that's part of the uh, the parent scene, the parent resource in this case, uh, it, this will be called. So this function, first off, is called passes in the target, but you don't need it here. You just need it for all of the different um, inherited scenes or resources, sorry. So decrement quantity is in fact being called here. And then uh, as part of the food item, we're going to call the target and add health. So again, this is assuming that in your target, in your creature, in your player scene, there will be an add health function that will uh, add some of this health and you know it could potentially look like uh pass in an int and then we'll say current her current health is blood equals uh health at oops added then you say if current health is greater than max health current health is equal to max health easy enough right and then in that scene itself then you can handle things like health bar and all of that so anyway uh this is how you do something like this you could do like add um different effects right you could say add slow effect right uh if this item has a slow effect um and you can even do like flags to say what i tend to do in my games is um I'll have a flag like here, and then if uh, if health restored flag is true, then I add health. And then this way from any of the food items, which you'll see in a second, let me pull up, uh, for instance, health restored is four. So let's say, yes, we want to restore this health. So then uh, health restored, this will happen. However, if we don't, then this item won't restore any health. So then you can have all kinds of different um, effects on your items on your food on your consumables that uh, all of your items don't need to use you can kind of pick and choose uh this export menu does get a little uh a little long a little tedious if you add a lot of this but ultimately uh this is a very clever way of doing this because you can get away with having all of your stats, all of your things in one place, uh, all of your data in one place for each of the items. And like you saw, this uh, adding a line here automatically updated all my resources that uh, are of this type of uh, resource. Yes. So there's my food on, but what if you want to equip uh, armor, for instance? So I went ahead and made, uh, there is, uh, of course, as before, it extends the item class. It is the armor item. It has a defense um, variable. And again, as before, we're calling the parents use item, passing in the target, so it's gonna decrement. Maybe we don't want this in the case of armor, but if you have, for instance, uh, you know, I think of like Minecraft, where if you uh, right click when you have no armor that you're wearing, but you have a piece of armor in your hand, if you right click, then it will equip the armor for you. So it'll decrement the quantity, so that you have zero in your hand, but then it will equip uh, to the target. So. I wrote this function for equipping. Again, we're going to pass in the target and um, we're going to call add defense in the target. Now, there are all sorts of functions that could be in an equip, right? You might want to change the sprites, right? Um, you might want to add um, animations or effects based on your armor. You might want to add to your max health, um, all sorts of things. Excuse me. And the reason that we made this a different function is so that in the inventory, we can maybe right click on it or uh, right click on the armor item and say equip or drag it into the item slot uh, for your character so that you don't necessarily have to be using the item from the GUI. You can be equipping it straight away. And likewise, you want to do an unequip uh, function as well and from here we'll just do remove defense and these two functions need to essentially parallel themselves they need to counteract each other so that uh, you're not ending up with extra stats or fewer stats so uh, this is fairly simple right um, being able uh, in this in this tutorial excuse me we learned how to call our parents functions we learned uh, how to use items from the GUI and you know 
Uh, I've thought about doing larger tutorials where I have stuff, <laughs> actual scenes that I can show this working on. But uh, for now, I think uh, I think that just about sells it. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and write them in the comments below. I also want to thank everyone because uh, I was watching this weekend and we hit over 100 subscribers, which I know isn't a lot. But uh, to me, just starting out, that means a whole lot. And I thank everyone who has uh, joined joined in this adventure of game dev with me. And rest assured, there's going to be a lot more game dev stuff, a lot more coverage of my upcoming game, Verdancy Vale this summer and beyond and uh, as well as a lot of Godot tutorials and potentially pixel art tutorials if you're interested in that. Um, thank you all for watching. Hope you found this insightful. Let me know if you have a better way of doing this, uh, what other ways you've been handling code, and uh, I'll see you all around.